Hey guys, it's uh, Selena Gomez here. And today, before we begin with the video, I just have one big milestone that I just want to share with you guys that is inside of my chest. And that is the fact that I just got a two-win streak in Fortnite. So what do you say, Dad? Am I ready to become a full-time streamer now? Am I essentially ninja? Oh wait, uh, hold on guys. Hello? Yeah, yeah, that's me. You're talking to Skyku. Uh-huh, uh-huh. TSM who? Cloudware? Jimmy, Jimmy? Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Anyway, so welcome back to another episode of the Unit Tutorials in Unity 2018. And here we're going to be making sure that every player has their own camera as well. Because right now every client has their own player, but the players don't really have any camera. So the client only sees from one camera right now. And if you guys enjoy and want to see more of these episodes, make sure to drop a like down below by hitting that thumbs up button. And also hit the subscribe button so you stay up to tune for new content, obviously new episodes of the unit tutorial and everything else that we upload on the channel. Also comment down below what you think of a series where we actually cover Unity 2018 and C Sharp Basics in the updated Unity with consideration to all the new systems and such. Now with that being said guys, let's get right into Unity. Hey what's up guys, it is Saikuru Sam here and hope you're all having a fantastic Wednesday. It's already Wednesday, the time is literally flying by. This week didn't even feel like it was an entire week, like it's it's still new to me <laughs> that we're on Wednesday. So hope you guys are enjoying your day, welcome back to another episode of the Unit Tutorials in Unity. So like I said, this is actually Unity 2018 now, so we're good, we're all good. Uh, what we're going to do in this episode, like I said before in the intro, is we are going to essentially add a new camera for every single player and disable all the other cameras for the players that are not this client so that the game, you know, kind of reads off the camera right and places it right for the, the actual player that is right now looking through his or her screen. So what we're going to do, we can begin by the basics. So we are going to, yeah, we can actually go ahead and add our player object into our scene right away like that and we can move it forward a little bit let's see if the camera okay that that's the perspective of the camera there we go and we can actually set it to be zero in x and maybe zero yeah that's actually pretty good and z maybe five three two something like that yeah i think two is good uh, we don't want it to be right in front of the camera's face, but, you know, at the same time, we want it to be a little bit farther back so that the camera can see all the other players too. So, next up, we are going to make the camera, the, our main camera object, a child of the player object. So, it's going to be a child of the, of the player here. And when the player spawns, obviously, a main camera will be spawned as well. Now, if we didn't code this... Uh, further from this point, it would only be that the player would spawn, you know, a new client would spawn, one more client would spawn, and the main camera would just kind of bug out or glitch out because there are so many players, there are so many main cameras, and none of them are disabled, everything is active, which is wrong, because obviously you don't want that. So what we're going to do instead, we are going to go ahead and uh, we can actually first and foremost overwrite this player prefab uh, with the new one that we just added inside of our hierarchy. So what you do is you just click and hold the player object and drag it onto the player object in your assets folder. There we go. So now you have overwritten and obviously if you drag this into here you can see that the main camera is also added in a part of the, of the prefab itself. And uh, that's actually why the main camera is in blue text now because it just kind of signifies that it, or signals that it is a new prefab. So we can actually remove it from our hierarchy now and you'll see that we have no cameras right now which is completely fine, it's okay. So we're going to open up our player script here. Wow, Visual Studio was really fast. Oh, actually, it was open in the background. I was like, why is it so fast? <laughs> Did I do something wrong? Uh, so we are going to create another, a new variable here, and we can call this public game object camera, or maybe just player camera. I think camera is going to interfere with the other, the class itself, the camera itself. Um, inside of void start now, we can actually say if is local player equal to true, then player camera dot set active uh, true, and we can also say else player camera dot set active. I can't spell. There we go. False. 
Now we're gonna go back to Unity. So let me open up Unity. There we go. And we are, as you can see, if you play the game, if you try playing the game, you'll receive an error that is saying unassigned reference exception, the variable player camera of player has not been assigned, which is obvious because we created a new public variable and we are trying to access it through these code that we just, you know, added inside of our player script. But there is no object in here for reference. So what you want to do is you want to go to your assets folder, pick the player object, and then uh, just extend this player object itself, the prefab, and drag and drop the main camera into the player camera field here. So now you can actually hold down control, click B to build and run your game. And the client, there we go. So it's going to open up in a new client for me automatically on my other monitor. So meanwhile, I'm just gonna open up the game here, click on LAN host and boom. So we're in the game. We're now going to move a little bit to the right with our player. Now you can realize that the camera is obviously following our player because it's a child of this player object. So the player is a parent. So it's just following, right? And meanwhile, we obviously have the other client here. Let me just try that. So, if I do like this, if I go ahead and connect as a new client, you can see that this camera focuses only on this player. And if I move this client, well, I can even do like this. If I move this client, you'll see that the player correctly moves, but the camera for this player remains on this player, while the camera on this player remains focused on this player. So this is the correct way. And this is something that a lot of people think is very difficult. Like, oh God, how do I make the camera for my multiplayer FPS? But it's like, it's really, really easy actually, because you only check if the player, the local player has actual authority over that player object. So if the client is the one that is playing the game with this specific player, then you just say, okay, the camera is going to be enabled for this player, but for every other player, the camera is going to be disabled for this client. So you disable all the other players' cameras except for your very own, which is obvious to say, but especially when you get into coding, I can see that it's, you know, I can see the logic behind why it feels intimidating, but it's really easy. This is the, literally the code itself. Something else that I want to add in this episode as a final part of this video is player interaction. So we're at least going to start with it. Like As per usual, obviously, we're not going to do anything way too specific. But I decided that we could actually try, you know, adding a little bit of interaction so that the players don't feel really cold with each other. Because if there are multiple clients, the biggest reason is because they want to interact with each other. So what we can do to begin with is we can go ahead and click on our prefab for player object and pick to tag it as the player. And next up, we can actually go ahead and add a box collider to our uh, object here. And we can put the size of it to be 1.5, 1.5. Uh, and 1.5 so in every axis you want the size to be 1.5 the reason I pick 1.5 is because it it's kind of like I tried it within the unity scene and if I put it you're gonna be able to see that this is the box collider that we just added It's perfectly aligned with the size because we obviously want it to be a little bit bigger than the cube itself the mesh itself so that the players can actually collide with each other um, but we can remove it from our hierarchy and one more thing that I, oh, and also obviously check is trigger so that they can actually enter these two collision zones uh, so that they don't get blocked by each other because we want them to collide and these are the zones that they can collide in. Um, one more thing that I want to add is a rigid body. Now, if you don't add a rigid body on trigger enter void, which we're going to be using, is not going to work. And the reason is it needs to be a physical object in order to have it, you know, work correctly so that we can actually physically check if these two objects are colliding. Um, important thing though, we can actually remove or rather disable use gravity and enable is kinematic so that they don't fall down and they don't get affected by the gravity and they don't have any other kind of movement like a rotation because of the physical uh, you know, the physics that are added now by adding a rigid body to it. So I think we're actually done here and now we can go to Visual Studio and we're gonna add a little bit of code to this. So we can hop down a few lines from void update and say void on trigger enter collider other. All right. And this is, like I said, the void that we're going to be using in the function itself. And this checks if the if there are any objects that have entered this specific objects, you know, collision zone by using a box collider or any other collider type 
but with the is triggered box uh, enabled or checked so which is the one that we checked and it was really important so uh, that's why I'm telling you don't forget about that because it's kind of stupid to like forget about it and then you get to code you do it all and then it doesn't work and you're like well I don't really see any errors so uh, make 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 sure to check it um but in this code we're basically gonna do like we usually do with single player games so we're gonna say if other dot tag equal to player so if the other object that is being triggered or triggering this object is tagged as player then we're gonna be doing something so we could actually say a private boo uh, triggering another player and we in here we can say triggering another player equal to false or a true <laughs> There we go. And then we're gonna need another void here and say on trigger exit. So it's essentially the same, you know, the same logic, but this one is for exiting, the other one is for entering. And this is so that we can actually set the boolean to be false. Uh, we're also gonna say collider, collider other, and we could just go lazy way and copy paste this little snippet. I still suggest you guys, as always, to write the code by yourself and don't, you know, copy paste because if you're, especially if you're new to uh, C Sharp and Unity and all that kind of stuff, and Unit, obviously, um, you can, you, you will always find it helpful in the future by adding the code by yourself because it's kind of, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're at my level, no, just kidding. Uh, but if you, if you're as experienced as I am, it's like, yeah, you, you can just copy paste, boom, you're done, but. When you're new, you obviously want to learn the code a little bit as well. So now we can actually go back to Unity, build and play, or build and run, I think it's called. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Mm, oh, wait, hold on. We actually forgot one thing. We're not doing anything if they're if they are actually colliding. Uh, so what we're going to do is instead of our void update, um, underneath is local player obviously because we always want to check if the, if it is the local player so that we don't let other players do anything you know with these objects um, underneath that we're just going to say if triggering with another player and input dot get key down key code dot e then we're gonna print something and we could say that we're gonna print like uh, let's say we remove these and we can say this dot game object dot name plus um, is being or triggering or maybe triggering ah collide is colliding with and then boom boom uh, yeah we can actually have another object here we can say private game object triggering player or other player and we can set the other player equal to other dot game object in here and then we can set oh uh, other player equal to null so when we enter the collision zone we're gonna set the other player variable to be the other object that we were colliding with and we're not when we exit the collision zone we're just gonna nullify other player which means zero so it's empty uh let's see here oh yeah it's because of this uh so we can say now other player dot name there we go triggering oh triggering another player i think that was the name yeah there we go <laughs> I was like, that name is a little bit too long for my uh, for my taste. Now the thing is, you know, this code works perfectly fine, and the the only wrong thing here is that we are printing something, which doesn't really, you know, Unity or maybe even the client doesn't like that. The reason is because if we run the game through Unity and we open up another client, la la la, you know, connect with the client and all that kind of stuff, and we trigger with the player that is inside of Unity with the other object and press from this client inside of Unity on E, it's going to print. But if we do the vice versa, if we press E from the other client, even though they are still colliding, it's not gonna print anything. Because Unity finds what we're trying to print. The client is outside of Unity, so it doesn't have a class that is named print. So it doesn't know what are we printing, where are we printing, you know, what, what are we trying to do? So what you wanna do instead is 
by simply testing this otherwise or by some you know actually for testing purposes this can still work so it does work because if you do build and play or build and run um it's still going to work but you know if you want to do something else obviously you don't really want to print uh maybe you want to change the color maybe you want to open up a dialogue uh something else right but we could make this a little bit fun and say destroy uh other player that's a little bit scary actually that is a little bit scary but we're gonna test it out uh, because it's all about experimenting <laughs> So build around the game and uh, This should at least be a very good way of You know just experimenting like I said, so we're gonna host the game here Oh No, hold on. We're gonna yeah We're gonna host it from the client that we just opened up and we're going to connect as a client here. All right, there we go so now uh, We are going to destroy the other player. So I trigger boom there we go, so it's destroyed, obviously. Now the reason I didn't want to host it from Unity is because it was going to mess up the entire host if I destroyed this player, because we are hosting as a client as well, and when the client disconnects, if it is the host, the game is kinda of gonna, you know, shut down. So you don't want to do that. Actually, it's not a bad thing, so you can do that, but you know, it's just not my taste, I guess. Uh, but that is pretty much it, guys. That's how you add a very, easy kind of interaction between your different players and you can obviously make it more more complex and we are going to make it more complex further in this videos or further in the series um, speaking of which if you have any ideas or any suggestions on what I should co you know cover up and show you guys how to do etc let me know in the comments I'm all ears for feedback I'm all ears for suggestions and all that kind of stuff so I'm I'm always here, so let me know. And um, obviously, like I said, if you enjoyed these episodes or if you enjoyed these episodes, make sure to drop a like down below. Those thumbs ups really do help a lot, actually. And um, if you're new around here, make sure to also hit that little subscribe button so you stay up to tune for new videos coming soon. Uh, because we're gonna be obviously we're gonna continue this series, but we also have a lot of a bunch of other series that are running on the channel. And um, like commentaries, like level designs, and even other types of videos. So, yeah, guys, with that being said, I'll either catch you in the comments or in the Discord server. See you guys. Peace out. Have a good night. Bye bye. Maybe.